So we're asked which function has the greater y-intercept. So the y-intercept is the y-coordinate when x is equal to 0. So f of 0, when x is equal to 0, the function is equal to, let's see, f of 0 is going to be equal to 0 minus 0 plus 4 is going to be equal to 4. So this function right over here, it has a y-intercept of 4. So it would intersect the y-axis right over there. While the, the function that we're comparing it to, g of x, we're looking at its graph, y is equal to g of x, its y-intercept is right over here at y is equal to 3. So which function has a greater y-intercept? Well, it's going to be f of x. f of x has a greater y-intercept than g of x does. Let's do a few more of these where we're comparing different functions. One of them that's, that's in a visual, uh, has a visual depiction and one of them where we're just given the equation. How many roots do the functions have in common? Well, g of x, we can see it, their roots. The roots are x equals negative 1 and x is equal to 2. So at there, these two functions at most are going to have two roots in common because this g of x only has two roots. There's a couple of ways we could tackle it. We could just try to ta find f's roots or we could plug in either one of these values and see if it makes the function equal to a zero. I'll do the first way, I'll try to factor this. So let's see, what two numbers, if I add them I get one because that's the coefficient here or implicitly there. And if I take their product I get negative six. Well, they're going to have to have different signs since their product is negative. So let's see, negative 3 and positive 2. No, actually the other way around because it's positive 1. So positive 3 and negative 2. So this is equal to x plus 3 times x minus 2. So f of x is going to have zeros when x is equal to negative 3, x is equal to negative 3, or x is equal to 2. These are the two zeros. If x is equal to negative 3, this this expression becomes zero, zero times anything is zero. If x equals two, this expression becomes zero, and zero times anything is zero. So f of negative three is zero, and f of two is zero. These are the zeros of that function. So let's see, which of these are in common? Well, negative three is out here, that's not in common. x equals two is in common. So they only have one common zero right over there. So how many, or how many roots do the functions have in common? One, all right. Let's do one more of these. And they ask us, do the functions have the same concavity? And the way I think, or one way to think about concavity is whether it's opening upwards or opening downwards. So this is often viewed as concave upwards, and this is viewed as concave downwards. Concave, concave downwards. And the key realization is, well, you know, if you just look at this blue, if you look at g of x right over here, it is concave downwards. So the question is, would this be concave downwards or upwards? And the key here is the coefficient on the second degree term, on the, on the square, x squared term. If the coefficient is positive, you're going to be concave upwards. Because as x gets suitably far away from zero, this term is going to overpower everything else and it's going to become positive. So as x gets further and further away, or not even further away from zero, as x gets further and further away from the vertex, as x gets further and further away from the vertex, this term dominates everything else and we get more and more positive values. And so that's why if your coefficient is positive, you're going to have concave upwards, a concave upwards graph. And so if this is concave upwards, this one is clearly concave downwards, they do not have the same concavity. So no. If this was negative 4x squared minus 108, then it would be concave downwards and we would say yes. Anyway, hopefully you found that interesting.